Hey, you guys, welcome back to FedBiz Exchange. I'm Michelle Brown, your coach and your mentor. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about how to maximize your contract profits using bid pricing templates. Some of you may be familiar with my bid pricing templates, but it's very important that you understand what goes into pricing a contract correctly, the things you need to think about. Oftentimes we just get a number and we stick it in. Some of you are not even sure about what you should charge for. So I'm going to walk you through bid pricing using this template that is already pre-calculated. We're going to start with part one, staffing and labor. But before we get started, don't forget a couple of things. You have Ask Michelle B if you have any questions, and then don't forget to subscribe. If you want to get your bid pricing template after this video, click on the link in the comment section and get your bid pricing template so that you will never miss a beat when it comes to pricing your contracts right. guys, we're going to go to step two, how to price your bids. Whenever you're going to put together a solicitation responding to the government, you need to make sure that you have your pricing right. And I've created a tool which will allow you guys to do that. It makes sense to have a pricing template because you need to make sure that you're pricing things properly. Even if you think you can include everything in your head, don't do that. You need to write down everything you include in your bid pricing. You know why? Because when you win, you need to make sure that you calculated your profit correctly. So that's the most important takeaway. You want to make money. Now, I often tell you guys, don't be overly aggressive with your bidding pricing. However, you should always make a profit, even if it's $5,000. Sometimes to get started, it may be $2,000, but that $2,000 and that $5,000 can turn into $50,000 and $20,000 before you know it. So I'm going to review with you in a few steps my bid pricing template. You can get this on the website. All you need to do is click on the link down below in the comment section. Or if you're part of my mentorship program training, this comes with your program training. So you can just go ahead and download the link inside your course and your training. But for the most part, I'm going to review with you what every step is on this bid pricing template. So first here at the top, you have, of course, the basics, your company name. You should do one of these bid pricing templates every time you bid so that you know exactly what you bid and where your numbers came from. So for your company, you're going to put your company name here. You're going to put the name of the proposal here. You're going to put the agency that is sponsoring the proposal. Here, you're going to put your solicitation number here, and you're going to put the submit due date here. This bid pricing template should go with your solicitation. And remember, I taught you to always keep your solicitations because that's how you're going to learn how to price things in the future. Let's say you don't win the bid, but you still want to know how the other company won so that next time you will know exactly how to bid against your competitors, okay? So the next two columns, total price or total contract price, I should say. Now that is pre-calculated based on the information you put in the spreadsheet below. And I will walk through each of those sections with you. So total contract pricing, you don't touch that. You see there's a warning sign here. It's going to calculate on its own. Estimated contract profit. You want to base your pricing in a way that you know you're winning. 
You don't want to do things for free. Again, I don't want you to be overzealous, but I also don't want you to give away things for free and neither does the government because they know if you're not making any money, you won't come back. And believe me, they need you as much as you need them. So make sure that you understand these two categories. You don't touch these. They automatically calculate. Okay, so this last column, estimated contract profit, that is what your profit is going to be based on. That's where it's going to come from. So if you just want to take a quick glance at the numbers, this is where it is, this green shaded area right here. Now, let's go down here to the first area. First of all, I have the instructions right here, complete all sales outlined in red where applicable. Roles, titles, work sites, hours, company markups. Company markups are what you want to mark up on the service pricing that you're offering or the product pricing, okay? Green cells which are the totals and they're protected. They will calculate automatically. And so are the yellow cells. The yellow cells are your totals for your contract price. Okay, so let's go through this. So the first column under contract staffing and labor, this would be all the labor within your company. Okay, so Mike Smith, I just put a name there. Mike Smith is a cardiologist and Mike Smith is going to be hired by my company. And I am going to provide healthcare services staffing to the federal government. Which government site is it? Well, it could be in Chicago, as an example. I would put Chicago, Illinois, okay? They want, and when I say they, the government is telling me they want Mike Smith, the cardiologist there for let's say 10,400 hours. Now notice every time I put in some information, these are the regular work hours that the government gave me. I put that in, but nothing happens over with the totals yet. You know why? Because I haven't put in a rate. So now I'm going to put in a rate under the column that says rate. I'm going to put in $109 per hour. That is per hour, okay? And the regular total for Mike Smith to the government thus far is $1,133,600. I said $1,033,000, but it's $1,133,600 to be exact, okay? Are there going to be any overtime hours? Well, the government would tell me that. So those overtime hours could be, let's say, 50 hours, okay? And what is my overtime rate? Meaning, what am I going to charge the government for overtime? Well, we know that we have to pay our staff overtime when and if they go over 40 hours a week. So if the government does that with my cardiologist, I'm going to charge them $115 an hour, okay? Just as an example. And that's for 50 of those. So that is an additional $5,750. What is my markup? Well, personally, this is how I would do it for my staffing company. I would charge an extra $10 per hour per person. So for that cardiologist, I'm going to put my markup as $10, okay? That's $104,000 in markup. Now, let me show you something up here, up at the top. So far, I am charging the government $1,243, or I should say $1,243,350. Uh, okay, now my profit at this point is $104,000. Now I'm not done, but that's what my profit is at this time. As you can see in my total labor category, all of that is showing right here. That's where that contract price comes from. Now, if I want to add other employees, I just go back over to the left, add more employees. Let's say I want to add a contract administrator, Michelle Brown. I would put in where my work site is. If that's at my home office, I would put the number of hours 
that I might work on this contract. I would put that in this column. I'm going to do that. So let's say Michelle for a whole year, because remember, when I have to give numbers to the government, this 10,400 hours is based on a year. Okay. So if I have to give more work to the government, it would be by the year because the government is going to give you a base period contract and they're going to give you all of these options down at the bottom. Most contracts come with options. So it would be four options in almost all cases, unless it's a product, of course. Products don't work that way, but services do. Okay, so let's say I wanted to have Michelle Brown be a contract administrator. And Michelle doesn't need to work on the project full time, but maybe she's just going to do 50 hours a year. I'm just putting out a number. Well, Michelle makes $45 an hour, her regular rate. Okay, so that's $2,250, right? So what if Michelle has to do some overtime? Well, Michelle is not even doing 50 hours per year. So it's not likely that she would do overtime. So I don't need to calculate that. But do I have a markup for her? I absolutely do. I'm going to mark Michelle's services up $15. And what is that going to give me? That's going to give me not very much, but another $750. Okay. All the way across, Michelle's fees are $3,000 total, which upped the value of this $1.2 million contract. It actually went up to $1,246,350. And that is how you calculate your pricing for your government contracting under not just staffing services, any service. So the first thing that we reviewed was how do you deal with internal staffing and labor. And this is the first row right here where you deal with that. In the next section, I will deal with subcontracting.